God, that the word, God, will come forth without any distraction. Oh, God, it will come forth confidently. It will come forth boldly, God, in the name of Jesus, that it will cut where it needs to cut. Oh, God, it will heal where it needs to heal. God, it will provide guidance where it needs to provide guidance, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you now, God. We thank you even for our cyber sanctuary, oh God, that will hear the word on today, Father. We thank you, God, that lives will be changed even through our internet audience, oh God, and it will draw the men to the sanctuary, God. Draw the men to the sanctuary, God. Draw them into the sanctuary. Draw them into the sanctuary, Father God. Even before the walls come down, draw them into the sanctuary, God. We will move. We will put our chairs. Draw them in to the house of the Lord now, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. And we honor you, Father. And we bless you, God. Because this is the day that you have made. And we shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice, God. We shall rejoice, God. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice, oh God. Our situations, God, will not stop us from rejoicing. Oh God, our hearts will not stop us from rejoicing, God. We will wait well. We will rejoice in the wait, God. We will rejoice in the wait. Oh God, we will rejoice in the wait, God. We will rejoice in the wait, God. We will rejoice. We will rejoice, God. We will rejoice, God, because you can and you will do it, Father. And we thank you and we honor you this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, she say, we will rejoice in the way. Come on, I will rejoice in the way. So this is the day. Come on, this is the day. That the Lord has made, we will rejoice. Yeah, I see some people rejoicing because this is today, not yesterday, not the days to come, but this is today. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice. Yes, Lord. Come on, what does your rejoicing look like? You ain't know something big? What did your rejoicing look like? What do you say when God says, here I am? Where are you? Yes, Lord. You go through the hurt, the pain, the rain. Where are you? I will rejoice. Lord, I know y'all want me to say something big, but I will rejoice. That's all I got. I will rejoice and be glad in it. My God, my Lord. Well, it's time for worship. Hallelujah. It's time for praise and worship. It's time. It is time. Come on, look at your name and say it's time. Yeah. Come on, say it's time. it's time. Come on, look at somebody and say, are you here for praise and worship? Are you here for the word? Are you here because this is the day? Are you here just because it's Sunday? Or are you here because he has made you glad? And so we give him honor. We want to welcome you. Come on, tell him, say welcome. Come on, welcome. Tell them, welcome to Word of Faith. Welcome to our cyber sanctuary. Come on, wave at them in the back. We know they're watching our YouTubers, our Facebookers. Come on, welcome. We want to welcome you to Word of Faith. Let me come, let me bring myself back in order here. We want to welcome you to Word of Faith, where our pastors are none other than Pastor Jonathan and Trika Brown. Hallelujah. We are still in our new location and we keep, come on, every fire go higher and higher in here. 
every round goes higher and higher and so we want to welcome each and every one of you and tell your neighbor it's time it's time it's already happened so it's time amen come on and bless the name of jesus in this place come on and open up your mouth unto the lord hallelujah anybody excited to be in the house of the lord this morning if you're excited open up your mouth and lift up your voice hallelujah because we have come to give him praise come on and praise the name of jesus come on and praise the name of jesus come on and praise the name of jesus hallelujah we bless the name of jesus hallelujah look at your name and say neighbor we have come to give him praise so stand on your feet and give God the glory and the praise. We lift you up this morning, Jesus.
up your mouth and call him like you really know him. Jesus in the morning. He's Jesus in the noon day. He's Jesus at night. Cause late in the midnight hour, I can call on Jesus. I can call on Jesus. I can call on Jesus.
the name of the Lord is this not the hour to worship him is this not the hour to praise him he is so good to us I just want to say that again I, I want to know if we have a congregation that knows how good God is I mean like you're not thinking about what's going on you're not thinking about what's happening around you you just understand that he woke me up. Oh, I didn't even say he woke me up in my right mind. But he woke me up. Did, did, uh, let me say that again. Because see, some of us are saying, well, I'm going to praise him because I'm in my right mind. But I'm not even going to deal with whether what your mind is. Are you just grateful that you're alive? Are you grateful, Faith Nation family? Are you grateful that you are among the living, breathing, breathing, inhaling, exhaling? If we just get caught up in that. Okay. Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I am breathing. Because it's his breath in our lungs. Tell somebody else I'm breathing. See, don't tell somebody else I'm breathing. I'm breathing. It's his breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise. Hey. It's his breath in my lungs. Just tell your neighbor, say you're breathing. You are breathing. We alive, hallelujah. We among the living, hallelujah. We give you glory, God, hallelujah. There is none like you, hallelujah. We give you praise, hallelujah. We bless your name, hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised, hallelujah. You're worthy to be honored, hallelujah. We glorify you, hallelujah. There is none like you, hallelujah. We search everywhere and there's no one, no one, no one, no one, no one anywhere like you. We praise you. You regulate our mind. You keep our blood vessels and you keep our heart, hallelujah. You control the migraine, hallelujah. No suicidal thoughts this morning, hallelujah. We come to give you praise. We come to give you honor. We come to magnify. Can't nobody do me like, can't nobody do me like the Joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy. I get joy. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I feel my strength coming back. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey. Joy, unspeakable joy. Mandy 
can't give it to me. So man can't take it away. Who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? I'm coming back. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth. Okay. It says what? Mighty God. Okay. So let's let's get. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. God, great God, fantastic God, amazing God, loving God, merciful God. What, 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 what? We bless your name. 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 Hey, we bless your name. We bless your name. Okay. I'm back. See, what I'm realizing that a lot of this little stuff that be going on is a distraction. I'm really not supposed to still be here, but I'm here. So it makes my mind change, evangelist. Is that even when we say we're not supposed to still be here, unless we know that we're still supposed to be here. Because the devil can't kill when purpose is still in. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm available for you. Wake up the purpose in me. Wake up the reason why I'm still living. Wake up the reason why. Wake it up. Wake it up. Don't let me be distracted. Don't let me get worried. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wake, wake it up. No, 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 no. Wake up my purpose. Wake up my purpose and pull it out of me. Wake up my purpose and yank it out of me. Wake up my purpose and... This is the day that the Lord has made. I have a rejoice in me. I have a praise in me. Oh, I want to say thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. I shouldn't be here, but we still here. We shouldn't be alive, but it was his grace. It was his mercy. He said, I can trust him with trouble. I can trust him with trouble. I can trust them with trouble. Tell somebody I'm going to outlive the trouble. I'm going to outlive the trouble. I'm going to outlive the disappointment. I'm going to outlive the lies. I'm going to outlive the rumors. Now. <laughs> I got a 
three times and say outlive it tap your neighbor come on outlive it outlive it come on find three more people tell them outlive it go to somebody else outlive it you can high five them you can pat them on the shoulder you can say in the name of Jesus in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus you shall outlive it in the name hey, hey, hey. in the name in the name in the name of you shall
giving. What I'm learning is a lot of things are distractions. And what it tries to do is slow us down. It either trying to slow you down, stop you, or push you too fast forward. Okay. Happy. 
Okay, so, so, so we got to do this. We got Brother Kevon and the Deacon standing up here. Okay, so. You know I'm a little happy. In my and I don't want to run around the church. So since I don't want to run around the church. No, I'm like, I'm not running. I'm trying to keep my composure. Faith Nation, I'm telling you, family, you see how they doing us? Like, I came with a praise. Okay, so we got to do this. No, 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 stop. Stop your feet. It won't even stop their feet from moving. All right, so really quick, really quick. We need to do our tithe. Y'all not helping. Y'all need to do our, we need to do our tithes and offering. Amen. All right, so those that are giving their 10%, Y'all not helping. No, no. because Pastor Brown came.
Okay. All right. So, 10% belongs to the Father. Amen. Malachi 3.10, it records that we bring our tithe to the storehouse. Amen. And one of the things that I love, it says that it'll, he'll open up windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing that we have no room to receive. The thing that I, I get joy about because it says test me. Prove me. Some of y'all haven't tested the Lord yet. 10% belongs to the Father. He trusts us enough to let us have control of that money. IRS take money. FICA take money. Taxes take money. Where you don't have a choice. But the Father who is faithful gives us a choice whether we tithe and give our offering. 10% again, those that are tithing, if you could stand to your feet. Ooh, Jesus. Outlive it. Oh, outlive it. Outlive it. Outlive it. And then I'm going to ask everyone else, normally pastor does the $20 seed, but I'm going to ask that those that can stand with $25 today, if you can stand, that your minimum is 25. And God may be telling you to do more. As you all know, we are on our kingdom call. And... It's for his glory. Amen. Just look around. Say, we're going to outgrow this space. Hallelujah. We're going to outgrow it. Amen. I was with Sister LaShawn yesterday evening, and one of the things she looked, and she went in, one of, she went in our multi-purpose room, and she said, y'all need to open a school. Like right now. And so, it's important, even as we give, get ready to give our tithe and offering, you got to see past where you are now. If nothing else I've learned is that I can't stay in a season that's temporary. Amen. Seasons change in the natural. Ooh, hallelujah. Yeah. And so, those, everyone else, get the best that you can in your hand. And even if you don't have nothing to give, put a desire to it. Tell the Lord, I want to be a faithful giver. Everyone standing across this room, everybody gonna walk. And we're gonna pray. Amen. They messing us up with these strings in here today. Just hold it up to the heavens. And just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you that you can trust me with tithe and offering. I am a cheerful giver. I thank you for trusting me again to do right by what you've given to me. Now, Father, I'm testing you in your word according to Malachi 3.10. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Say, not as a dead as I owe, but as a seed I sow. Amen. I'm going to have all of you sit, and I'm going to start from this side, starting from the back. And you go around, Deacon Carnell is right here if you're giving by car. And we have those that are watching online. Um, we shout out to you, our Faith Nation family. The information should be on the screen in how to give. We have multiple ways. You can do Zelle, you can do Givelify. Amen. And we have Cash App that's coming soon. And so we thank God for that.
And then I'm going to go ahead and ask this side to go ahead and stand. And we want to say happy anniversary to Trey and Jaleesa, who celebrate their anniversary today. She like, y'all put me on blast show, did? I don't have an anniversary song yet. And then we're going to start from the rear with all that standing started from there. Yes, God. So now, while they doing that, can this side just start rocking like this? Mm. And get a look out, come on. Come on, all right. Now, as that side, as y'all coming back to y'all seat, I just want y'all to put y'all hands together. While they moving side to side, you're going to begin to put your hands together. Come on, middle row right here. Y'all just start putting your hands together. Y'all going to rock. Yep, come on. And we also have the way of giving by the debit. And then I'm going to have this side over to my right, starting from the rear. If you can stand and you're in the hands. Wait a minute. Y'all rocking? Okay, what happened to y'all clapping? Come on. Come on, where y'all clap at? For youth church. So please prepare to go to youth church and have a great time. God bless you.
Hallelujah. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you for this day, a day that you have given us, a day that you have made. We have come, O oh God, to rejoice, give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. I pray now, O oh God, that as we continue forward in this service, O oh God, that you have your way and that your will be done in all things. I pray now, Lord, that I decrease, that you may increase, and that your people hear from you and not from me. Allow me to share your word as you have given it that it may produce your desired result. We give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before you take your seat, hug or wave at, shout at three people, tell them I love God and I love you. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Faith Nation, our audience that's viewing virtually. God bless you for you all that are here. God bless you and thank you for coming. Um, there is a word from the Lord. I want to start with a familiar, familiar to some, maybe not to all, familiar quote uh, from a gentleman named Robert, Robert Schuller. And it simply says, tough times don't last, tough people do. Tough times don't last, tough people do. I, I want to remind us, start out by reminding us who we are. As children of God, we are not going to be exempt from tough times. As children of God, we're going to deal with our situations. We're going to deal with 
adversities, we're going to deal with challenges. But I want to come back and say, as children of God, God never called us to be wimps. There is a level of power and a strength that flows through the spirit of God that should never be mistaken for a wimp. I may deal with tough situations. Today may not be my best day, but I promise you I'm going to get up from this. I promise you that I'm going to come through this. Why? Because tough times don't last. Tough people do. And we're getting into that time and we're getting into that thing where as Christians, we have to remember that part of our responsibility is war. Let me try that again. Part of what we deal with as Christians is what we call spiritual warfare, which again is a level of war. It's a level of fight. It's a level of battle, and I want to make sure that we understand as Christians that we must also be fighters. I, I got some amens because I, 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 I think it's from those who know how to fight. Some folk got saved and they loved it because they thought that they can get rid of the worldly fights because they weren't good fighters. But now that you're saved, you know, because some people talk like they can fight. And no, they had, you ain't never have a fight. Stop it. And the one fight you had, you lost. So just, just, just stop it. But I remember, you know, growing up and, you know, those, old, those times where you, you know, kind of horseplay with your friends and, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you the one that's on your friend's side and all of y'all ganging up against one person or maybe you, you the one today they're ganging up on. And, and the one thing that you knew you always had to do, because uh, you're horse playing, it wasn't real fighting, but you know, it was, it was real. It just wasn't real, you know, fighting. Uh, the one thing that you had to always do when, it was, when you were outnumbered is if you ain't got nothing to pick up, you put your back up against the wall so you can fight what's in front of you. Uh, not allowing anything to get behind you. See, 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 what's happening, what's happening is we're allowing the enemy to get behind us. Uh, when in reality, at best, he should be under our... So you have to learn how to keep what you're fighting in view in front of you. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. And, and, and so for those that are watching and that are uh, uh, presuming or assuming that because we're saved, we're wimps, I'll just say it like this. Don't try us. Let me, let me. Don't try us. Let me try that again. Don't try us. If I have to be mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared to fight a devil, you think that I'm going to run from you? Okay. Folk want the calm pass. So let's go. Let's, let's just jump into the scriptures. And I know we don't have our screens up, but somebody say they coming. I'm going to read. I heard soon. I like that. I'm going to ask everybody to stand to your feet while I read two verses of scripture in your hearing. Everyone that can, everyone that can, stand to your feet while I read two verses in your hearing. Coming from Acts chapter 14, I'm going to read uh, out of the Amplified, ver Amplified Version, verses 18 and 19. I'll give you a moment to get there. Acts chapter 14, out of the Amplified Version, I'm going to read verses 18 and 19, and this will be where the the premise of today's lesson is going to come from. When you got it, say amen. amen. Verse 18, Amplified Version says, Even saying these words with difficulty, they prevented the people from offering sacrifices to them. 
Verse 19 said, but Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium, and having won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. Today, I want to minister from the topic, down, but not out. Down, but not out. You may be seated. Paul, just uh, some, some history. We're going we're gonna to work through the scriptures today. Just a little history. Uh, Paul had an interesting uh, transition, if I can say it like that. Um, he started out as a Pharisee, as a Jew, and he believed as the Jewish customs were. Uh, but as he was... Uh, vigilant in his Jewish or Pharisee responsibilities, he was known as a persecutor of the church. Uh, and he had no problem persecuting any and everyone that thought that this Jesus uh, uh, that he had been hearing about thought that this Jesus was going to be the same. He had no problem persecuting them in the church. Uh, sometime uh, later, as he was headed down the road, uh, uh, he had his own encounter with Jesus. See, the reason why some people haven't grown as they should have yet in Christianity is because they haven't been knocked off their own donkey and had their own encounter yet. And, and this is important for us as adults, uh, but specifically for our young adults and even our children. Uh, you can't hang on your parents' relationship with God. You need your own. Paul had his encounter and he was knocked off and he had to deal with some things, but ultimately he became a convert. Uh, uh, but, you know, sometimes, especially with us as people, we are leery of some people. And, and, and so uh, uh, because he was known for persecuting the church, when Paul tried to walk up in the church, folk was looking at him strange. Because I know who you were. Uh, some of us can't get rid of the stigma of who we were or who we was. And Paul had to deal with that. But what was interesting about this at this time is that not only was he not embraced by the church, the people who were his friends, the Pharisees, had turned their back on him. H have you ever found yourself in a situation where nobody wants to be around you? Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're literally in, in, in the middle? You don't fit with this group. You don't fit with that group. This group don't want to embrace you. And you have to start a journey with Christ all along. Paul found himself in that situation. And ultimately, uh, you know, he had to prove to the people that he was this man that God had converted uh, and, and it's interesting, it's interesting because my job is to help you. And I got to prove to you that I want to help you. And ultimately, although we look down at people and we look at people strange, uh, this was a man that God saw potential in. Mm. Why is that important? Because human eyes, you can't necessarily see what God is trying to do spiritually. But God saw potential in Paul such that he became the author of most of the books of the New Testament. Do you see potential in your neighbor? Do you see potential in those that are sitting around you? Why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying because we need to develop a spiritual eye and check this, not a critical eye. Yeah, because we can look at you and remember who you was, but we can't look at you and tell who God has called you to be. Still with that down, 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 but not out. And, and sometimes down is, 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 is literal, and then sometimes it's figurative. Sometimes we're just down. It's just not a good day. We're just depressed. We're down, we're down, we're down. And that's where I'm trying to figure out where are the Christians, where are the saints that can lift us up? Pastor Treek and I were talking, I don't know if it was the other day, a few weeks ago, 
Um, and, and one of the drawbacks or, or challenges I have with church people is that they want you to encourage them. But when they go through, they want to do it in secret. If you're going through hell and you want some encouragement, you need to speak up. But I'm just, you know, the Lord just put it on their spirit. Why does the Lord have to put on my spirit that you going through hell when you can just open your mouth? Some people don't get encouragement because they don't say, I'm going through. I don't even, Lord, I wasn't even going there. But if you're going through, we need to speak up because you have a body. You, you, first of all, you're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. That's a whole nother story. But you have a body of believers that are willing to fight with you. <laughs> uh, where are my fighters at? Do we got some fighters up in here? Fighters, the fighters, the fighters. <laughs> Amen. Acts chapter fourteen. We're going to start at verse eight. I'm going to I'm going to pick up in the English Standard Version to just to kind of give you some context. Um, but our fighters, we need our fighters. We need our fighters. Uh, because again, you're going to be dealing with situations that uh, you gonna have to fight your way through. You may have to fight in the spirit, but it's a fight nonetheless. Acts chapter 14, beginning at verse 8, it says, Now at Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. Somebody say never walked. He listened to Paul, verse 9, speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well. I just got to pause right there for a second. As Paul was ministering the word of God, and, and it, 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 this is so important, so many things I got to say about this. Uh, I'm tired of people being Christians just in name but not in power. I, I, what good is it to be a Christian when you can't show me you're a Christian. But I can show you I love. That was only part of who God was, was love. But God actually demonstrated his love and he demonstrated a lot through his power. And so we find here as Paul is out preaching and teaching and sharing a word that somebody caught his eye. And they were looking at Paul, and Paul was looking at him intently. And, 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 and Paul, uh, uh, sensing in his spirit that this man who has been crippled since birth has faith. And as a matter of fact, he has the right amount of faith to be made whole, to be healed, to be made well. And, and it just sparked a question in me, what has to be paired with people who have faith to be made whole, what, what do you have to pair with those people in order to see somebody healed? Something has to be matched with that. Something has to be combined with that. Something has to be paired. Because I've come in church, and I would assume a lot of you have come in church, and you've seen people with conditions. Yeah. And you've seen people with enough faith to be made whole. But why aren't they whole? Something is missing. I have Paul on one side. He's looking. He's caught the eye of a person who's crippled. And he has the spiritual sensitivity to say, man, this, this guy has the faith to be made whole. This guy has the faith to be healed but something is missing, and we'll get there, we'll get there. Verse 10 says, uh, uh, so he said in a loud voice, this is Paul talking, stand up right on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. 
Paul saw it. Paul released the word, stand upright, get up. Power of the word. And the Bible says that this crippled man sprang to his feet. And, and, and I love it, I love it, I love it. He didn't just get up. He got up and started walking. Some of you have stopped halfway. You've gotten half of what you were promised, but you have to take the next step, which is let's actually begin walking. This guy sprang to his feet and he began walking. And so what is missing in the church today that, that, that would help somebody who desires and needs to be healed? What's missing is people who can walk in dunamis. People who can walk in such a power, dunamis power and authority that will shift and change things. I see your need. I'm going to match your need with the spiritual power that's in me. Get up. And that's what we're missing. That's what you're not seeing in church. That's what we're, we're, we need to see more of that. We need to see people who are operating in the power of the spirit Making things happen. Stop operating in the power of yourself because yourself can't do nothing. Where are those people who walk in the power of the Spirit? The power to speak to mountains and mountains be moved. The power to call things that are not as though they were. Power to make a way out of no way. Listen, one thing that I, I know growing up is that my mother had the power to make something out of nothing. And most older adults did that. I mean, we didn't have a refrigerator full of food, but I promise you that, give her a moment, she gonna go in there and whip something up. And although she did it with scraps, you look at like, oh, you got to make this again. When did that? Because that, that was power to create something. Where are those who have the power to walk on water? Well, that was what Jesus did. No, 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 Paul did, uh, Peter did it too. Where are those who can calm the storm, who can heal the sick, who can raise the dead? Where are those who can perform miracles? And that's what we're missing. I got, I got to read a few verses of scripture to you from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to read to you verses 7 through 10. And, and I know I'm jumping. I'm going to read through the Amplified. But I got to read this because I need you to hear this and understand that there is a power that's missing in the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to read verse 7, beginning at, uh, in the Amplified Version. It says, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. Uh, so, so well, I, you know, I don't know what God called me to do. Why don't you know? Because to everyone is given the manifestation of the Spirit. And so if you don't know, you need to link up with someone who can help you understand what you can do. So, but to each one is given a manifestation of the spirit. Uh, it says the spiritual illumination and the, enact, and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good. Verse 8 says, to one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak, the message of wisdom, and to another the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same spirit. Verse 9 says to another, wonder work in faith is given by the same Holy Spirit. And to another, the extraordinary gifts of healings by the one spirit. And verse 10, I just want to hit the top one. It says, and to another, the working of miracles. Where is the miracle working power that flows through the Spirit of God? Who has it? 
We seek all these other gifts. We seek all these other things. But why can't somebody come up in the church and get a miracle? Why can't somebody come up in the church who has the faith? Why can't they come up in the church and find someone who has that gift of healing? What needs to be paired? Somebody with the spirit of God that operates in the power of God that's flowing through other gifts. Like, I, I want to prophesy. That's great. No problem with that. But is that it? I want the gift of tongues. <laughs> great. It's your heavenly language. Is that it? I want the gift of administration. Great. Is that it? problem that we have is that people, see, some of these gifts require a greater level of sacrifice and commitment. And too many people in church are surface level Christians. We do what comes easy. What's on top. But if I actually have to get a shovel and dig, if I actually have to get a shovel and do some work, if I got to put my back into it, you know, I got so many other things to do. In power in the house of God, we're, we're, we're lacking the power to help those who have the faith to go forward. Tired of us being Christians in name only. Call yourself a Christian. Show me you're a Christian. We should have power to do more than what we're doing. Some of us can't even pray away a headache yet. I still got that same old headache. You haven't gotten rid of that yet? If we struggle to pray away a headache, you ain't going to ever be able to raise the dead. No, I, I'm talking about power that's, that's available to us. Why have God's spirit with everything in his spirit and not be able to access the fullness of what God has given us? Back to Acts chapter 14, verse 11. It says, and when the crowd saw that Paul or saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Uh, the, they saw Paul uh, uh, heal and perform this miracle on a crippled guy. They knew he was crippled. They, they, they don't know. And they saw it and, and, and immediately they began to shout out in their own language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Part B, or the second part of why we're not seeing people with this level of power in church, uh, it came from a uh, letter that a gentleman, a uh, foreign gentleman named Acton, Lord Acton, he had wrote to Bishop Creighton. In, in, in 1887, so just, just follow me for a second with this one here. In a series of letters he wrote concerning the moral problem he was investigating. It says, Acton believes that the same moral standard should be applied to everybody, whether you are a political person, a religious leader, or anyone. He said, I, I, I notice there is an issue when it comes to power and moral standards. And he coined this phrase. He says, power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. What are you saying, pastor? Some people don't know how to hold and how to operate in that power. Because when you get power, it goes to your head. Oh, my, you, I'm the manager. And? I'm the director. And? 
we don't know how to use power in such a way that benefits others. We know how to use it to benefit ourselves. But are you able to walk in such an authority and a power that you won't allow it to corrupt you? Reason why some pastors can't be given the stage they want to have is because they'll have babies from all the women in church. And not just talking about male pastors because lady pastors do the same thing. I heard one amen. I, 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 I. Power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so how can God's spirit flow through the church the way God wants it when you don't know how to wield and use the power he's given you? That's why God has to go out into the hedges and highways and find someone that he can trust, somebody who ain't power hungry, and say, I'm giving you this power. Uh, many people would look at Paul the Pharisee or Saul the Pharisee before his conversion and, and, and you can tell one thing about him is that he believed what he believed. Now, on the one side, you would be like, yeah, but he, he's, he's, you know, contributing and participating in the killing and the jailing of Christians. Yeah, but when God looks at it with the spiritual eye, he said, yeah, what he's doing isn't right, but I can use that. It's a shame that God has to go out in the street and get a prostitute to lead certain ministries because those in the church can't do it. It's a shame that God has to go and pull a drunkard uh, and bring them into the house of God because they can be trusted more than the people taking up the seats. So God had to go find Paul. He said, because I can trust him with this power. We're not seeing people walk in the spirit of power that we should is because they don't know how to use it and they won't use it in the right way. That's why I tell you all before, you know, people praying that the Lord, Lord gonna bless me with millions of dollars. Why? So you can get that house you always dreamed of. So you can get that car you always wanted. Why would he bless you just so you can do for you? That's why he gave you a job. That, that, that helped you do for you. And don't let, Lord, don't let me go there. Why, why is it, let me, let me just go there since we're there. Why is it that we have so many able-bodied adults not working? Bible say a man don't work. All right, let's move on. Verse 12. Because that, that, that just kind of, that, that just, that just, that's challenging for me. If you're able body, if you're able to work, that, that, that's challenging to me. Because you have responsibilities. Mad at folk because folk won't give you money for food to feed your kids. Those your kids. Feed your kids. <laughs> move on, Pastor. Move on. <laughs> Acts 14, verse 12. Barnabas, they call Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Verse 13 says, and the priest of Zeus whose temple was at the entrance of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. 
They saw Paul flowing in the power of the Spirit. He healed a crippled gentleman who had the faith to be healed. And now all of a sudden, the gods have come down to us here on earth. And immediately they began to try and worship the men. They had already, don't let, and this would think with folk, you know, folk will try because of their familiarity and their traditions and their customs, they will try to link you and make you something you are not. The problem we have is we love praise. We love the applause of people. Although you, you realize you're dealing with a, 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 a Greek or a, a foreign uh, uh, area and people with different beliefs, you trying to hold on to the names they're calling you. They're giving you Greek God names. And you trying to hold on to it. Zeus. We're going to call you Hermes. We're going we, we to create something for you. And we fall for that. The thing you got to realize is that worship was never yours. Worship belongs to God. And the fact that people want to come and worship you like you something great. Let me try that again. They want to come worship you like you something great. And you're accepting it? That's a problem. That's why God can't give you power. Because before you know it, before you know it, you are the chief angel. Ministering in song. Your lungs are like pipes and when you, when you talk, it sounds good. But the problem is, is that when people start praising you, you thought that you can exalt your throne above God. Uh, and that is the fast way, the quick way of getting yourself kicked out of heaven. Don't let people worship you. You're not God. They can thank you and give you, you know, hand claps and all that stuff. But when they start to cross the line, you have to stop that. Because the reality of it is, is that all of your righteousness is as filthy rags anyway. They coming and they got the whole city involved and they crowds coming and they want to offer sacrifice. To the gods, Paul, who is Hermes, and Barnabas, who is Zeus. Don't let people worship you. Verse 14, but when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, men, why are you doing these things? Hey, hey, hey. What are y'all doing? Fifteen he says, "We are also we also are men of like nature with you. We're just men." I know that is a hard reality for men to accept because we've let people as men put us in a box like we supermen. You are also a man of like nature. You ain't no different as a man, as a man, as a man, you ain't no different than any other brother. I know you like to think because you have the title pastor that you somehow a superman. Because you got the title bishop, you're somehow a superman. Men, don't let people put you in that box. Don't let people make you think that you are more 
than what you really are. Because there will come a situation where you're going to have to prove if you are who you say you are or not. Well, I, 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 no, no, no. Hebrews 4, 14 and 15, I, I got to read this to you hearing. It's interesting because uh, uh, some people, uh, I'm not a man, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian man, but you're still a man. Uh, Hebrews 4, 14, it says, Inasmuch then as we believers have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith and cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in him as Savior. Love 15, 15 says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weakness and temptations, but one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every, as in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. If Jesus can accept the fact that he is human, that he is a man, why can't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, man, I, listen, I, I shared this with you all before. I, I remember, you know, back in the younger days. And, you know, we be doing stuff. And, you know, at the church, I, I love to get involved. So we guys, we doing something. And it can be heavy or whatever. I love to get involved. Now, man, when these younger guys get in there. When you got Kevon and Jair and Matt telling you to move and let them get it. We're doing something the other day and Deacon Ricky said, I got it, I got it. I'm like, hey man, let me get on out the way there, you know. <laughs> it doesn't make me less than a man. He said, I called you young man because you strong. So I got to recognize that I'm on the other side of young. I ain't old yet, but I ain't. There are some younger men who are stronger. But we're all men. He says, back in Acts chapter 14, he said, we also are men of like nature with you, and we bring good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. He said, listen, we have been anointed to bring a message. We're bringing you a message. We're bringing you good news. Matter of fact, we're bringing you great news. We're bringing you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and, and we're trying to tell you that these vain, uh, uh, traditional and custom things that you're doing, it ain't it. And so all of this trying to worship and give all of this stuff to us and you trying to sacrifice, that ain't why we are here. That's a shame. Because some pastors, some leaders, and, and, and not all of them pastors, but some of them, you know, they walk in titles. And it's unfortunate because when they come and they get behind the pulpit, it's about the money. But when you can wield the power of the Spirit of God and you can say, I don't need your worship and I don't need your sacrifice. I, as a matter of fact, I love it. I love Paul. Uh, there was one time, you know, Paul, Paul was being challenged about this and that. Paul said, listen, I didn't come to you asking you for anything. Paul said, when I came, he said, the only thing I wanted to know was Jesus Christ and him, and him crucified. He said, the reality of it is, he said, this brother works with his own hands. I, 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 that, that's why I tell you all before, we've started the kingdom call, but you, you ain't got to worry about pastor trying to run away with, because pastor got his own job. I, I know how to work with my own hands. welcome <laughs> Acts 14 16 says in past generations he Jesus allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways yet 
he did not leave himself without witness. For he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and with gladness. I love the way that Paul and Barnabas are engaging them. Uh, uh, where I think we get lost is that when we try to tell people about, the, about Jesus, we got to go, well, you know, in Hebrews it says this, in John it says that, in Acts, they just talking. They ain't quoting scripture. They're just talking. They're just communicating to a people who don't know God. Let me tell you about this God we serve. Too many people think that you have to go to seminary for 20 years in order for you to actually witness to people about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. And the reality of it is, is that all you need to do is be knocked off your donkey yeah. or your high horse. And you'll have something to talk about when it comes to Jesus. All you got to do is remember that you were down one point, but you went out, you got up again. We struggle, we struggle, we struggle because we're trying to witness the way we see it on TV or the way that Bishop did it or the way that such and such. Did. Just get the good news out there. He didn't leave himself without a witness. Verse 18 says, even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. None folk were so determined to worship and offer sacrifice to Barnabas and Paul that even by telling them how good Jesus was, they still wanted to worship and offer sacrifices. That's the problem that we run into sometimes. You start out persistent. But after a while, you, 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 come on, give it to me. Now, you, you done gave in now because they were persistent against you and trying to make you take and be and do something that you are not. That's why I love John the Baptist. They came to John the Baptist and they were saying, are you the one? You got to be the one. You got to be the one. You're the Messiah. You're the one that they call for. He said, no. He said, I'm just a voice. Yeah crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way for that one to come. You got to recognize not only who you are, but who you are not. Some of us don't know who we are, let alone who we ain't. And so these people are trying to make them take something that they shouldn't. I don't want your worship. And I don't want your sacrifice. Uh, let me say that here. Faith Nation, word of faith. We don't want your worship. We don't want your sacrifice. We want your commitment to him. You, you want to you see your pastors and elders happy? Love him. Love him. Love him. Verse 19. Uh, but Jews came from Antioch and Iconium. And having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. So now, uh, just, just a little context. So Barnabas and Paul are on their first missionary journey. And their responsibility is to go from city to city, uh, or at least the cities that God would allow them to go into, and preach the word. Give people the gospel, the good news. Yeah. And, 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 and so they mention here Antioch and Iconium for a reason. Uh, they had already been in Antioch. I'm sorry, they mentioned Antioch and Iconium for a reason. They had already been in Antioch and they'd already been in Iconium. They've already been there. They went there to preach. They went there to share the good news uh, about Jesus there. But they ran into some interesting challenges. <laughs> and so I, I want to start by saying uh, at times ministry will be painful. But tough times don't last. Tough people do. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because I'm tired of seeing people quit on God. 
well, you know, I didn't really quit on God. No, 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 no. When you put your hand to the plow and you removed it and you turned back, you didn't quit on the church. You quit on God. You, you, you remember, you remember uh, uh, with, with uh, the prophet Samuel? You remember that when he was leading the children of Israel and then all of a sudden the children of Israel started looking around. Mm. They got a king. They got a king. They got a king. They got one too. Samuel, we want a king. We want to be just like everybody else. Samuel, the spiritual leader of the children of Israel, the prophet, the man of God, was so distraught and upset. He went in prayer and cried out to God. His people want a king. God say, what are you crying about? He say, the people haven't rejected you. They rejected me. They no longer want me as their king. They want to be like everyone else. So rejecting what leadership says, you're not rejecting the leader. You're rejecting God. So they're preaching. They dealt with this situation. These folk here, they want to praise them and they want to worship them and they want all of this. But then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium had come back and found them. And they persuaded the crowds to stone Paul and drag him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. What was interesting is that when they were in Antioch, because Barnabas and Paul initially, that was one of the earlier places they went to, uh, and, and, and you know, whoo, you want to hurt church folk? You tell them they're doing it wrong. <laughs> Paul and Barnabas started preaching to the Jews in Antioch, and he began to recount the history from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And at first, they were kind of embracing it. But the problem came is that folks started to want to hear more of Paul and Barnabas than the current establishment, the Jews that were there. See, you, you, you got to be careful and you got to be wise. As God is raising you up and God has given you a bigger platform, there are some other people who had that platform that don't want to see you on it. I know you think everybody love you, but let me let you in on a secret. Everybody don't love you. Everybody don't like you. Oh, but you know, everybody, no, no, stop it. We're living in a dream world. And that's why when folk do stuff to us, uh, you know, we crying. You don't have to cry when you understand they didn't like you from the beginning. I, 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 doing my job and doing some things, I'm dealing with people that I know don't like me. I still got to deal with people who I know. I got a call one day. Oh, Jonathan, ooh, your name came up. Uh, we had our council meeting, and they, yo, they was talking about you and how hard you were. And then the next day, you meet with the people you heard that were talking about you, and you got to deal with life as usual. I, I, I don't have to let you in on the fact that I know. I just know how to deal with you. I just know how to handle you.
God, man, I, I, listen, I don't, I, I've, I got, Lord has given me some experiences. And I have dealt with some things and some people on jobs to where I, I, I just learned how to deal with people who don't like me. And, and, and the reality of it is, is that, you know, like with some people, when you know somebody don't like you, you can like, t you tell them without telling them because it's all over your face. I ain't got to say nothing because the reason why you're coming to me is because I'm in a place of power. So I ain't, I ain't got to let you know that I know. I just know how to deal with you. And, and, and I'm going to deal with you the right way because the reality of it is, I love how the Bible says you render unto Caesar what's belong to Caesar and unto God. I, when I'm at work, I'm not at church. The man of God ain't changed, but I understand the job I have to do. Some of us got to understand the job you got to do. Folk didn't give you a job so you can sit there and read your Bible all day at work. That ain't why they gave you the job. Amen. The Ten Commandments don't steal. You in there printing out church stuff on their paper, on their copies. You thief. Move on, move on, Reverend, move on. So he's dealing with the Jews from Antioch. And y'all thought Christians did steal. And then you want to be mad. They persecute me because I'm Christian. No, no, no. They persecute you because you're stealing their ink and stealing their paper. <laughs> All right. Woo. And so Paul began recounting the history and all this stuff. And, and, and it's interesting because the thing I love about it is because the word of God stands alone. You ain't got to add to it. You ain't got to color it up to make it look good. The word of God stands alone. And as he began to preach and teach the word of God, the people started liking it. Such that they said, hey, you want to come back to the synagogue next week and, and share some more? Came back to the synagogue next week. And like I say, man, when the, when the, when the Jewish establishment at that time in Antioch Heard it and saw that people, there was more people at Paul and Barnabas' church session than at theirs. They started to have issues. They started to contradict some of the things that they were saying such that uh, uh, the Spirit of God moved upon Paul and Barnabas and said, it was our responsibility to come to you, the Jews, first. You don't want it. We headed to the Gentiles. The reason why we're here and we can grab hold of some of the promises the Bible records is because the first people who should have gotten the word didn't want it. He says, so I'm going to call a people who were not a people. I'm going to accept and bring in a nation who was not a nation. And, and, and I'm going to become their God and they're going to become my people. That's how you got here, Mr. Gentile, Miss Gentile. That's how we all got here. And as they continued to preach and deal with the stuff they were dealing with, they decided to leave Antioch. And the Bible says, and they shook the dust off their feet against the Jews 
in Antioch. And, and that's important. It's important because when the disciples shook the dust off their feet in, in, in the Jewish towns at that time, it was a sign of their separation from the Jews because the Jews refused to accept Jesus. So you telling church folk that they doing it wrong and you leaving. And those church folk were upset. Iconium, similar. Preached the word. Folk had issues. Didn't like what Paul and Barnabas was saying. And then ultimately they wanted to harm both Paul and Barnabas. And so that's why you see in verse 19, it says, but the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium. See, there are some places that you've already gone to work to lay the foundation that God has uh, required you to lay the foundation, but you've created enemies in places that you may not think. And at the right time, those enemies will rear their ugly heads and you're going to have to deal with that. You know, they just, they all love me. Stop that. They didn't all love you. I was, uh, when I remember you used to work for, you know, and we, we got we to do a better job with our spiritual discernment. Uh, but I remember working for uh, the city of Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, uh, the ladies had pulled me to the side, and they were talking about this person, that person. And they said, I said, oh, I, I didn't know. They said, well, Jonathan, if something's wrong with your gaydar. How come you can't recognize folk that's gay? I said, I don't know, because I, 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 just, I just don't know. But I bring that to you. Your spiritual sense of discernment is off. How come you can't recognize what God is doing? They stoned him, they drug him out of the city, supposing he was dead. Verse 20 says, but when the disciples gathered about him, <laughs> he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derby. What are you saying, pastor? The same dunamis that Paul walked in when he saw the cripple man. <laughs> he saw that that cripple man had the faith to be healed. It's that same dunamis that he saw that when he was down, the brothers and sisters in Christ came around him. And, and, and it's lovely, it's, it's, it's so great because the Bible don't record they said anything. Verse 20 says, but when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up. There should be an inherent power within us that we shouldn't have to say a word. We should be able to come and link up together and the power of God should flow like it's never flown before. But the problem we have is how do you wield the power God has given you? How do you use the power that God has given you? Disciples came around. This is why I say you ain't got to fight by yourself. The disciples came around, surrounded them, and then all of a sudden Paul got up. You got to get up. You've been laying there for too long. Let me try that again. You got to get up. You've been laying there too long. You got to get up. You've been laying there too long. I can't get up. The reason why I know you can get up is because I saw who stood around you. And I know they walking in power. You got to get up. You may be down for the moment. But I ain't out. I, I, I ain't staying in that position. Men of God, women of God stood around him 
And all of a sudden, he stood up. Would the real children of God stand up? Would the Bible-believing children of God stand up? We, we continue to cower to the pressures of this world. Get up! The Bible says it's simply a candle on a hill cannot be hid. No matter how much you want to hide from the world, today is your coming out party. Get up. Let the world know that I believe in Jesus. And the thing I love about it is that when you get up, you need to get up with all the courage, the level of commitment, the level of bravery that it takes to walk in the anointing God gave you. Because why? Look at your neighbor and say, because it ain't over. <laughs> uh, and why you say that pastor why you say it ain't over because in verse 21 it says when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch the same ones that raised up the, the frustration in the crowd to stone him he say, I'm going back to those cities. See, see th th that's what I know you ain't scared no more. That's, that, that, that's what I know you ain't scared. Uh, because although they came up against you, a host came up against you, you understood that God was raising a standard. I ain't, I ain't scared. Too many of us are scared. Where is your courage? Where is your faith? fight where is your conviction your commitment to God problem is is that you know uh, you never expected the enemy to hit you like the enemy did but that's the nature of fight the, 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 the reality of it is is that you ain't the only one punching you have someone on the other side punching back at you and because you a bad brother, because you a bad sister, it ain't just one that you're dealing with. That's why I told you earlier, you need to put your back up against the wall and get ready to fight for all that you know and all that you have because the enemy has already sized you up and realized he can't beat you one-on-one. -on -one. The, the, the enemy realizes that, so the enemy does some of the cowardly stuff we see going on today. Ooh, go there, Pastor, go there. You ain't tough because you can drive by and shoot somebody who don't know you coming. If you tough, man up. That's an OG. No, that's an old coward. That's an old punk. Because he couldn't face you man to man. Nobody think that you tough because you can get a gun and shoot somebody. Anybody can do that. But if you bad, just walk up on them. I don't know when we got to. We cowards and we think that that's tough and that ain't tough. Paul and Barnabas said, all right, we finished preaching over here. Let's go back to Iconium and, uh, and, and Antioch. The ones who threatened to stone me and they stoned me over here, I need them to know that I got up. What the enemy meant for my bad, God has made it work out for my good. I'm still standing. You want to repossess my car? That's fine. I'm still standing. Foreclose on my home? Give me an eviction. I'm still standing. Fire me from my job? I'm still standing. Doesn't matter what you throw at me, I'm going to stand. Why? Because I have God on my side. God is my author. He is the finisher. I'm not scared.
And I get it, I get it, I get it. Some of us don't want to return to the place of that pain and that trauma. And, and really, I mean, it goes beyond pain. It was traumatic. It's in your, it's, it was trauma. But you got to go back there. Because you can't finish the story over here. You can only finish the story back where you started. They went back out. They went to these cities. And 22, and we're closing. This is why you got to go back. 22 says, strengthening. They were out strengthening the souls of the disciples. Encouraging them to continue in the faith. And saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Everybody's standing to your feet. Ministry will not always be easy, but it will always be rewarding. I may be down. You, you got a good one. You, you snuck me and you got a good one. But I ain't out. The dunamis power that I spoke over that crippled man. I got people that I'm connected to that's got that same power. Are the people in your five, your fave five or whatever that circle is, do they have the power to help you get up? Because if they don't, you got the wrong five. Try that over here. If they don't have the power to help me get up, then I can't be that close to them. Now, they could be one of the hundreds of friends you got on Facebook. But that inner circle? Nah, I need people that tell me when I'm down, I'm down, but you ain't out, get up. I, I, I don't need anybody that's going to sit there and coddle me it's okay you know there'll be a better tomorrow get up you've been down too long if you're here today and you recognize that you've been down too long and you recognize that it's time for you to get up we want to pray with you we're going to pray with you you can come you can come you can come you can come you can come. You can come. You have a family of believers. You have a, you have a group of believers that are going to pray with you. What you're going through now, this ain't it. This ain't it. This ain't it. This ain't it. No matter all that Paul went through, Paul went through some stuff. Shipwreck. Beaten. Jail. As soon as we get we we survive the shipwreck, I'm grabbing gathering figs and I get bit by a poisonous snake. Paul went through some stuff. You're gonna go through some stuff for the sake of the gospel, Elder, if you find anointing. We're gonna go through some, some things for the sake of the gospel. But you gotta stand. And you got to get up because there is more in you than what you know and believe. And so we thank God I'm down, but I'm not out. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I may be down now, but I'm not out. I'm not out. And that's what you have to tell the enemy. And all of them that are waiting for you to die. Some people are waiting for you to die. Walking by your office every day trying to see if you made it in. They're waiting for you to fall. When they peek their head through your door, you should just put a big smile. I'm still here. Enemy has been trying to get some of you all to quit. Tell him I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. And I'm still standing. I'm still here and I'm standing. And guess what? I'm standing big and I'm standing tall.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. For all of you that believe in the power of the Lord, come on, come on, come on, come on. you're here today and you're not saved and you want to give your life to Christ we just want to pray with you the prayer of salvation you can come 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 hallelujah hallelujah
here today and you say pastor brown i don't have a church home and i believe word of faith is where god wants me to be you can come you can come you can come you can come hallelujah hallelujah come on let's give god a hand clap of praise you may be seated you may be seated in the presence of the lord we honor you god for who you are and for what you do. This time we'll have our announcements. Hallelujah. And Faith Nation, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Virtual, our virtual audience. Come on, let's give our virtual audience a hand clap of praise. Uh, for you all that are watching today that are local, we always invite you into the house of the Lord. But if you can, you can. We value you joining us virtually. And I want to say God bless you. God keep you. God bless you, Faith Nation. Five p.m. on Zoom, Tuesday, April 16th. Greetings, Faith Nation. Here's what's happening this week at Word of